This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, United States Congressman Lou Barletta gives us his take on the situation between the U.S. and Iran. Good evening and thank you for joining us at FYI. I'm Ken Cara. Today, March 31st, is the deadline to outline an agreement over Iran's nuclear program. Today, United States Congressman Lou Barletta was in our studios to tape a Sam Lasan show. We asked him about the status of the negotiations and what the situation means for America. We'll get the preliminary outline of, of what this deal uh, is with Iran. And, and again, we're very, very concerned that, that we're even negotiating a deal with Iran. Uh, the sanctions that we had on them were working. Uh, that's why they, Iran wanted to uh, try to work out another deal. Uh, we, I think we should actually toughen the sanctions. Now, we can't trust this country. Uh, if Iran wants to be treated like a normal country, they should act like a normal country. And, and threatening uh, to blow uh, our ally uh, and the only democracy uh, of that kind in the Middle East, Israel off the face of the earth, is not acting like a normal country. The congressman will discuss Iran and other topics when he is a guest on the Sam Lasan Show tonight at 8 p.m. on SSP-TV. Some good news for Luzerne County. The county has obtained an investment grade credit rating. County Manager Robert Lawton made the announcement today in the Courthouse Rotunda. The rating will help the county with a debt restructuring package and can also lead to refinancing current debt at lower rates. Today's uninsured rating came from Standard & Poor's, a nationally recognized rating organization. The May primary is just around the corner. Lisa Sugart has the latest developments. Well, we thought the ballots were set for the upcoming May primary election, but now some changes are coming and uh, a little bit of a controversy involving one of the candidates as well. Mark Catcher, the managing editor of Standard Speaker, back with us. Mark, first of all, uh, one of the candidates for Hazleton Area School Board, no more on the ballot. Yeah, J Jim Capriotti uh, with withdrew his name, and he was in the race. He was one of um, seven candidates for the five open seats on the school board. Um, so he's, uh, he's withdrawn. He withdrew as of uh, last week, uh, the deadline to do so. And uh, that leaves six, six candidates for five seats. One, one person will be left out. Uh, we haven't been able to reach Mr. Capriotti to, uh, to talk to him either about his candidacy or his reason for with, uh, withdrawing. Um, but we do know that, that he is out, so we're, we're left with six. And for the school board, we could actually see the winners, like they could be victorious come the primary, because if you win on both tickets, they cross file, mm -hmm. the uh, candidates for Hazleton Area School Board. So uh, we'll have to wait and see if we actually have a race when November rolls around. Yes, some, sometimes it's relatively, uh, it, it, it's relatively known and, and basically decided in the May primary who will be the winner of those seats because, again, like you said, they cross file. If they win on both tickets, then there's a, a very high likelihood that they're going to get enough votes in November um, to be in the top five. Uh, it's very difficult for that, for that one candidate or, or two candidates who, uh, who only win on one ticket in, in May to get enough votes to overcome someone who is on both the uh, Democratic and Republican side. Well, we'll wait and see how that plays out. Well, turning now to Luzerne County Council, there are six open seats. One of the candidates, a Hazleton businessman, a contractor, Mark Rabo. And now uh, the county, I guess, according to its charter, he is not eligible to run. He, he's on the Luzerne County Redevelopment Authority. Um, and the charter, which was drafted a few years ago, uh, says that you cannot serve on two government bodies um, at least not within one year of having resigned from another one. Mm -hmm. um, so he's, he's currently on the Redeve Redevelopment Authority, and um, if he would, say, resign now, it would not, still would not give him, give him enough time to, uh, um, to get to that one-year window. So uh, his, his candidacy is, is up in the air. Um, and it, it's in black and white, in, black and white in, in the charter, so we'll, uh, we'll see how it plays out. But as of now, it's, uh, it's not looking good for, for Mark Rabo. He wants to stay on it, and uh, he, I guess, plans to challenge it if he does indeed succeed to win it, or we'll see how that all plays out mm -hmm. <laughs> if they right. keep him on. Right. Um, we also have an update for you on the Let the People Know show that will feature the candidates running for Hazleton City Mayor, the two Democrats and the two Republicans vying in the May primary election. 
a little change of venue. We're going to have it here live on April 20th at our studios at SSP TV at 7 p.m. So you'll be able to tune in. Mark, you're going to be one of the panelists with us. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, again, we, we talked a little bit about this before. Um, very, very excited to take part in it. I, I know I have a few questions for the, for the candidates that, that I'd like to ask. Um, and, and at this point, we have two candidates on, on each ticket. Um, Mayor Yanuzi, who is the incumbent on the Republican side, along with Councilman Jeff Cassatt. And then on the Democratic side, you have uh, Councilman Jack Mundy and um, Grace, Cuso. Grace Cuso, who is uh, pretty well known to the people. Um, she's run before, and she's very involved in, uh, in city government. Um, so it should be interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, and, and um, I'm, I'm glad that it's live that way. Uh, you know, people can see the, the snap reactions from the, from the candidates, and, and obviously they benefit from that because they can watch it on TV as it's happening. All right, so that is happening. Let the people know on April 20th at 7 p.m. live from our SSP TV studios. Mark and I will be asking the questions, and Sam LaSan Sr. will be the moderator for the program. All four candidates will be here, so mark your calendars, and we will also have several rebroadcasts of the event. We'll announce those in the coming future. Mark, thanks for being here. Happy Easter. Sure, happy Easter to you and the viewers as well. Thanks for the update, Lisa and Mark. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we have the story of a group of area agencies coming together to help out those in need this Easter season. And later in sports, we'll meet the newest member of Penn State Hazleton's softball coaching staff. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP TV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Hi, it's Lori Ogerkis with Brandon's Forever Home and our Care for Kids segment. This week we're talking about Brandon's Forever Home and I'm going to be able to show you exclusively um, the work that we've been done, doing within the house, especially um, right now as our teen girl population. Teen girls, of course, like any mother out there, father who, who are out there, um, they want to fit in, they want to be part of society, and they want to look like everyone else, and they want the opportunity to be able to shop at any time um, free of charge. That's what Brandon's Forever Home provides. Um, through my experience, I've seen children who've come into the system, and unfortunately, society thinks of them as less than. Um, not that there's something wrong with it, a hand-me-down, goodwill, or Salvation Army, but there's that label as far as foster children that they don't necessarily deserve the best of the best. And when we got together and started um, be being advocates for children in foster care, we saw that that was something that was missing. So we created Brandon's, and in turn, um, through the generosity of this community, through the generosity of corporations, through the generosity of partnerships, um, we've been able to provide teen girls with this beautiful room that they will be able to come up and select free of charge items that they need. Toiletries, um, clothing, Ugg boots, um, anything and everything that a child can come in here and feel like I dreamed maybe of a better life. And, and not only it's, is it the items, but it's also the interaction with people within the community like myself, uh, Tara to Hill Janine that we let them know that we are there for them and we are going to support them um, while they are in the welfare, child welfare system. So thank you. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for um, helping our teen girl population. Uh, I can tell you that when I see their faces and how appreciative they are, your work, your um, donations, are always thanked, thankful, thankful by these girls that really, really do not have the opportunities like other children have. So thank you, thank you for spending this moment with me with Care for Kids. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. All you can do is laugh, really, at this point. Snow once again in our area as we get ready for April. April Fool's Day coming tomorrow, but a little joke early right now from Mother Nature. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service tonight. 40% chance of snow mainly before 11 p.m. New snow accumulation of around an inch is possible. The low will be 23 degrees. On the extended forecast for Wednesday, mostly sunny. Our high will be 39 degrees, so still a little cool. 
On Wednesday night, partly cloudy, our low will be 30 degrees. Thursday looks very nice. Holy Thursday, mostly sunny with a high near 57. Thursday night, 60% chance of showers. Our low will be 47. Friday, 60% chance of showers again, high of 58. Friday night gets cool, 36 degrees for the low. Rain and snow are likely. Rain and snow likely on Saturday as well with a high of 45. Saturday night, there's a 30% chance of showers. Low will be 28 degrees. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Boyer Insurance Agency. They have two locations to serve you. One location is in Cunningham on Sugarloaf Avenue. The other one is in Nescapec on Broad Street. You can reach them in Cunningham at 570-788-3543 and in Nescapec at 570-752-7683. This Sunday, once again, the community of Hazleton will welcome in anyone in need or anyone who would like to share a day of fellowship for the annual Easter dinner taking place at Catholic Social Services this Sunday from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Pleased to be joined by two of the men that make this possible each and every year, Pat Ward, the president of the Greater Hazleton United Way, and Rich Solo, who is the director of resource development. Pat, why is it so important for the United Way to be part of this? I know it's not just the United Way, it's many agencies involved to make this free dinner happening every year. Well, as part of the United Way's mission, we provide funding to four agencies that provide for emergency needs, and feeding is, of course, one of those important needs. And over the years, as you know, our United Way has been involved with a Christmas Day dinner for the community. So this is an extension of that because four years ago, we realized that there was no dinner on Easter Sunday and there are a lot of hungry and lonely people on Easter and the two prerequisites remain the same that we don't want anybody to be alone or hungry on Easter Sunday and the partnership was formed initially with the Firefighters Association in Hazleton and those guys contacted the United Way and we were happy to lend our resources to it because we knew how to do it because we'd been doing it for over 25 years. And then it, it branched out over the years, Lisa. Uh, the last four years it's gotten bigger. Each year the uh, Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton is helping us with food this year. We have a big donation again from Gunella Foods the uh, American pork packers, uh, the Chrysler family, uh, are, they're donating the ham to us. So it's really a community initiative and it's, it's a wonderful project. It is a wonderful project and so many people take advantage of this. Rich, it's gonna be packed, I'm sure, on Sunday. Tell us, what do people have to do? Do they register for it? Do they just walk in? There's a couple different ways that you can handle it, Lisa. If you'd like to come and have dinner with us here at Catholic Social Services, 214 West Walnut Street, you can just walk in. No reservations needed. If you would like a delivery, if you're homebound, a shut-in, or elderly, all you have to do is call Catholic Social Services before the end of business on Easter Thursday. Give your name and your address and you will have a delivery that gets to you on Easter Sunday. Last year and every year we see our numbers grow. At the Christmas dinner this year we did over 600 takeout and deliveries. That was just deliveries alone and another 350 sit-down meals. So we see it grow, unfortunately, each year, but it's fortunate that we do have it so that we can provide for those that are in need. And it's not just those that are in need. Like Pat said before, we, our delivery people, may be the only person that you see on Easter Sunday or Christmas Day. So a lot of it is to help with those that just don't have any family. Uh, I forgot to ask you what the menu will entail, so I think we should ask that. Your traditional Easter ham dinner. <laughs> Mashed potatoes with gravy, mixed vegetable, a fruit cup, and dessert. All righty, sounds good to me. I want to mention real quickly in conclusion, we've only mentioned a few of the organizations that are participating with us. The list goes on and on, so we don't want anybody to be slighted. You know, we have the culinary arts students at the Keystone Job Corps Center are involved with this. And there are just so many organizations that, that come and help us each and every year. So if you didn't hear your name, it's because we don't have enough time to mention everyone. Absolutely. But we do say thank you to everyone who is making this wonderful Easter dinner possible. And happy Easter to you and your family. 
When volunteers gather for Sunday's dinner, one of the people responsible for starting the holiday tradition will be sadly missed. This year, we are honoring the memory of one of our founders, Ed Scarp, a good friend. Many people remember Eddie. Eddie and his family were involved for the first two years of our project. And as many folks know, we lost Ed in an untimely fashion in the fall of 2013. So the group that organizes the event thought there's no better individual to memorialize in this project than Ed Scarp. So we are doing it in Ed's, Ed's memory because we know that he'll be looking down and, and smiling at us on Easter Sunday. Tended the dinner a few years back and it's always a good time. Looking forward to it again this year. All right, before we go to break, here's your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers on the green screen. Pick two, nine, zero, lots of nines. Pick three, nine, one, nine. Pick four, eight, one, nine, one. And pick five, nine, three, zero, two, zero. When we come back, we're heading back up the hill to Penn State Hazleton to talk to one of their softball coaches. This is FYI News 13 Sports. The Penn State Hazleton softball program has a history of success. Last year they received an at-large bid for the United States Collegiate Athletic Association playoffs. It's a national tournament. Like any good program, their success is built on talent and good coaching. And here's a scary thought for the rest of the Penn State University Athletic Conference. Hazleton has an ace up their sleeve this year in new pitching coach Heather Dale. Former Hazleton area high school pitching standout Heather Dale wanders around Penn State Hazleton's upper gym looking at her pitchers from every angle. She loves being close to the action. I mean very close to the action. When she was eight years old her youth softball team needed a pitcher and she volunteered. Dale fell in love with pitching instantly. What did you like about it from when you started? Did you always like it? Uh, yeah, um, I don't know. I just, I felt in control. Like I, I was never really in control really of anything. I was the youngest sibling so I was always being pushed around so it was kind of my time to, to shine a little bit in the circle. So Dale shined bright and her light helped guide the Hazleton area Lady Cougars to multiple championships. During her sophomore year her team met up with eventual state champion Pensbury in the Eastern Final. It was a matchup that would change Dale's life. It was really nice playing Pensbury because they had that year six or seven girls going D1. Oh, wow. So it was kind of nice seeing that level of play and seeing, you know, oh, you know, now I'm starting to think about college, you know, as a sophomore. So it's, oh, okay, I can do this now too. Yeah, you know, when did you start to think, okay, I might be able to go to college? Was it that Probably, year, I think, or? yeah, you know, once I saw those girls and I saw how good they were and, you know, how well they were coached and, you know, I can do this. Dale knew she wanted to play softball at the next level, but she didn't know what she wanted to study in college. Lackawanna College invited her to get her general education credits at the school and play softball there for two years before transferring. Dale posted a 17-7 record with a 1.84 ERA for the Lady Falcons. What didn't show up on a Google search for her stats is what she did as a coach during her time at Lackawanna College. When I was still at Lackawanna, I helped coach a group of girls out of North, North Pocono School District. They were about 11 and 12, and they were the bad news bears. <laughs> um, so it was a previous coach that I had played for with my dad. So uh, we took these group of girls, and we moved them up until they were about 16, 17, and um, kind of built that relationship and built their program for their softball team because they didn't really have it. So now they're actually a top competitor for 3A, so we're excited. Bloomsburg University wanted Dale to transfer there and play softball, but Dale wanted to be a physical education and health teacher, and Bloomsburg didn't offer a program for that. So Dale made a tough choice to give up playing college softball, and she transferred to Lock Haven University. How hard was that to... It was hard. I still regret it, still to this day. So, um... Anytime I'm giving advice to any of the girls, keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Dale now works in the Hazleton Area School District as a physical education and health teacher. She also coaches in the Valley Regional Youth Softball League. By chance, she ended up showing Rich Lipinski's daughter a thing or two about pitching. Lipinski is an assistant coach at Penn State Hazleton, and he suggested Dale help out the Nittany Lions. She's an awesome pitching coach. She actually is the one that helped me gain my speed. Really? What did she kind of... <laughs> 
how did she do that? Just like through what you said, just yeah. tweaking maybe little things? Yeah, she pushes you. <laughs> like when we were first learning, we were on the mound and um, I wasn't pulling my arm around fast enough and she was yelling at me, you're throwing like an old lady. <laughs> But she's motivating. Does it really help being that you pitched in college, being able to understand what these kids are going through? And yeah. Everything? yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I can relate and say, oh, well, this happened to me, or I've been in this situation, here's what I did, or here's what I would change. So it's I, I could really relate to them. Watching Heather Dale coach may be just as fun as watching her pitch. She's in constant motion. Her face goes from a wide smile to completely serious in just a moment. She's in control, and she's ready to help Penn State Hazleton fight their way back to the national tournament, the United States Collegiate Athletic Association playoffs. And a big thanks to Heather Dale for taking some time to do that interview. All right, for local postponements, and there's a lot of them, check out our Facebook page for more. It's facebook.com slash FYI News 13. FYI, we'll be right back. Happy Wing Night! It's Wing Night at Bottlenecks. Get $2 off your order of wings or all-you-can-eat wings and boneless wings for only $14.95. Bottlenecks wings are voted best wings in the area year after year. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, Faith Assembly's annual Spring Fest and Easter Egg Extravaganza will be held Saturday, April 11th from 10 a.m. to noon. Join Faith Assembly for over 10,000 Easter eggs, prizes, games, crafts, and a giant inflatable slide. The event is intended for children ages 3 through 12. For info, just call 570-459-2410. And finally, Cunningham United Methodist Church will be holding their Good Friday Tenebrae service April 3rd at 7.30. For more information, just call 570-788-3960 or email them, cunninghamumc at ptd.net. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Franklin Clark Dunlap of Lebanon, private services will be held at the convenience of the family. Lamar Christ Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. John Falatovich of Hazleton, Funeral is Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. from the Fiero Funeral Home. Friends may call Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. June W. Peretti, formerly of Hazleton. Funeral Mass is Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. at the Mount Carmel Church in Tenafly, New Jersey. Friends may call Wednesday from 10 to 11.15 a.m. at the Barrett Funeral Home. Rose C. Rosenberger of Whitehaven. Graveside services will be held Thursday at 11 a.m. in the St. Casimir Cemetery. The McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Doris Stepanski of Freeland, the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home will announce complete arrangements. And David W. Varner, formerly of Hazleton, funeral services will be held privately. Friends may call Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Kay Cripp of Hazleton. Kay, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-455-7267, extension 104. I'm going to play in the snow. This might be our last chance. Enjoy it, everybody. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. Until then, take it easy.